So with the rollout of the 9800X3D, the 9900X3D, and the 9950X3D, uh, there's been uh, a lot of excitement around those CPUs, and rightly so. Uh, they're uh, pretty decent performers, especially the 9800 and the 9950X3D have been quite impressive. And because of that, I thought it'd be pertinent to do a video on how CPU cache works, not just the 3D V cache on the AMD CPUs, but on CPUs overall. And maybe that'll give you a better understanding of why cache can be important in things like gaming and even sometimes heavy workloads. So why don't we just jump right in and get to it? So the main two differences between cache and RAM is that uh, the cache is much smaller, uh, but much faster than RAM. And the RAM is much larger, but much slower than the cache. You've got uh, level one cache, you've got level two cache, and you've got level three cache. And level one cache is the smallest cache. Level two is the midsize cache, and level three is the largest cache. So the cache is located on the CPU itself. So it's a lot faster than RAM because RAM sits physically well away from the CPU. So it takes longer for it to process data to and from the CPU. And cache is much smaller than RAM in size. So uh, common examples would be like a level three cache that's 16 megabytes or 32 megabytes or even 96 megabytes whereas ram is much larger right you, you know common setups have 16 gigabytes 32 gigabytes or even 64 gigabytes of ram so the what they can hold is one of the main differences and so level one cache is the smallest of the three but it's also the fastest it it's the most efficient in communicating with the CPU. Level two is the midsize cache, and it has moderate speed versus uh, the level one. And level three is the largest of the caches, but it's the slowest of the three. RAM is the slowest of them all, because as I said, it sits furthest away from the CPU, and so that creates a latency of processing that data. Here's a simplified example of what a CPU could look like and where those caches could be located on that CPU. It's just an example of what it could look like. This isn't any particular design for a given CPU or anything. And what this does, because those caches are located on the CPU itself, it reduces that latency and maximizes the speeds at which it can communicate data to the CPU when it's calling for that data. So what happens is that the CPU first checks the cache to see if what it's looking for, the data it's looking for, is located there, which then in turn helps the system to process this data more quickly and more efficiently. If what it's looking for is not in the cache at that time, it will next look at the RAM to see if that data is there. And what what will happen from there is it'll potentially move that data into one of the caches so that if it needs to call for it again in a fairly quick manner, then it is a lot more efficiently processed. And depending on the recency and the priority of the data it's calling for, it can move that data between level one, level two, and level three cache. And conversely, if it calls for data that's not in the cache, it can move other data out of the cache and move the new data into the cache, especially if it expects to use that data again fairly quickly. As an analogy, if, you, if this data was on a highway, the cache would be the fast lane and the slow lane would be the RAM. And if the vehicle or the data is in the fast lane at that time, then it will continue to go forward at its fastest speed. But if it's in the slow lane, then it will move that vehicle to the fast lane or the cache to move it down the highway more quickly, if only temporarily. 
And as I said, if that data has a higher priority than other sets of data and it has room in the cache, meaning that it is more commonly used by the CPU, then it's more likely than not that that data will exist on the cache rather than the RAM so that it can efficiently process that data. And so when it finds that data on the cache, then that's what's called a cache hit. But if that data is not located in the cache, it's located in the RAM or storage, then that's what's known as a cache miss. And so the CPU is constantly moving this data between the cache and the RAM and storage, depending on what it's calling for and how recent it's uh, been used, what its likelihood of it being used will be, and its priority, right? So it, it's constantly shuffling and juggling uh, these sets of data to make it as efficient as possible. And like I was talking about with recency and priority and things like that for the data, uh, what determines in the system whether or not that set of data is going to be located on the cache or the RAM or even the storage is what's called temporal locality, which is to say that if that data has been used recently, it's more likely that it will be needed and used again because of that recency. And so it will move that data to the RAM or the cache from the storage to make it more readily available for use. So getting back to uh, the cache and how it impacts you and how you use your PC, uh, well, the most obvious benefit is in gaming. After that, it helps with uh, heavy workload productivity stuff and least of all with the simple productivity stuff. And the reason why it's in those orders of benefit is because with games, that involves processing large amounts of data and instructions, and so a larger cache can lead to smoother gameplay, reduced stuttering, and higher frame rates. Uh, for the productivity side of things, if you're doing things like uh, video editing, 3D rendering, or running large simulations and things like that, then a larger cache can benefit you just not as obviously as in gaming. And the least impact it has is on simple things, simple productivity tasks like word processing, basic image editing, web browsing, things like that. And the main, uh, main reasons why there's a difference in benefit to these things is because uh, on the gaming side of things and to a certain degree, the heavier workload productivity stuff uh, you're you're dealing with accessing large continuous blocks of data and so having a larger cache can be a significant benefit in certain scenarios especially in, on the gaming side for instance in, in games you, you're not getting as much stuttering you, you've got higher frame rates uh, the game plays a lot smoother, so less screen tearing, things like that. But for uh, things like general productivity stuff, like like I said, like uh, word processing, web browsing, basic image editing, well, that data is a lot more scattered. And so when the data is scattered all over the place, or not necessarily all over the place, but scattered widely, then it takes longer for the system to find and retrieve that kind of data. And so it will pull it into the RAM and possibly sometimes into the cache, but it takes longer for it to retrieve because it's not data that's commonly being used. All right, so there you go. That's uh, how cache pretty much works uh, for a simple straightforward thing without doing really deep dive into uh, the transference of data. And this isn't to say that things like cores and threads and RAM and VRAM and storage and, and their speeds aren't important in things like gaming and uh, heavy workload stuff. It's just to show you how important cache can be in those things. Cores and threads and RAM and to a certain degree storage speeds can come into play on your heavy workload applications 
and they can have a decent impact on how well it, the system handles those things, right? And in gaming, you know, you've got threads and VRAM and RAM, and sometimes storage speeds uh, can have a good impact on performance for gaming. But when it comes to the land of handling blocks of commonly used data in the megabytes, cache is king because of the bandwidth speed and proximity that cache has to the CPU. And so hopefully uh, you come away with a little better understanding of how important cache can be. And so when you're looking at CPUs in the future, it'll help you to make a better, more informed decision for yourself. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this information. And if so, please uh, hit that like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a ton. And as well, if you want me to take a deeper dive into things like this in the future, then feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you've got. And if you wanted to suggest me doing deeper dive stuff, please say so down there. All right, and I'll try to respond as quickly as I can to every comment. All right, thanks for joining me and hope to see you in the next one.